going back, uh, the, the inspirations in my life, uh, 11 years of age, Duncan Goodhue won an Olympic gold medal in the 1980 Olympics in Moscow, came to my swimming club, and I remember looking at him, seeing the way he swam, and I just went, wow, I want to be like you, I want one of these Olympic gold medals. Big inspiration. My mum was the other one behind me, pushing me, motivating me. Um, first international meet was a major, major competition, 1986 Commonwealth Games. Um, and I think at that age, I saw Duncan's medal and thought, I want to go to the Olympics. But it was a kind of dream as a, as a child going, yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that. It's one thing wanting it, it's another thing doing it. That start, I suppose subconsciously, that went into my mindset. And then Commonwealth Games 1986 coming away with a bronze medal was an achievement, but it's not, you know, I always set out to become Olympic champion. So I never kind of, I mean, I can look back over my career. I went to five Olympics and never became Olympic champion, but it never stopped me believing and wanting to become an Olympic champion. But I suppose the time I became a professional athlete was 21 years of age. I worked as a career driver, fitted double glazing windows, worked as a groundsman, worked uh, in a council office. Uh, I worked on building sites, lifting around plasterboards. And I realized that I liked manual labor. Now swimming to me is manual labor, it just happens to be my love. Um, but by trying those other jobs and trying to make ends meet, 1981, uh, a friend of mine, a friend of the family said, I'll support you for a year for the Olympic games for 92. I went to 92 Olympic Games, came sixth, Speedo sponsored me, and I think that was the big shift. All of a sudden, swimming became a career, because there was no money in the sport. So all of a sudden, having someone backing you and going, you know, you're good, go and do it, let's see what you can do. And then within six months, I broke the world record, became world champion, and things started. So had someone have backed me early, had there been money in the sport, potentially things may have been different. I might have won the Olympic gold medal. Okay, I, I have won uh, six World Championships, 11 European Championships, two Commonwealth Games, in total 47 international medals. I've been to five Olympic Games and I broke the world record eight times. I always say to people, I learned more from my failings than I did my winnings. But I mean, I think of the word fail and thing from action I learned. And I, and I never looked at it subconsciously, I just kept, it was one of these things I got out of the water. When I did do well, I kept going, I can do better. And when I did fail, as it were, I didn't fail, I learned. I always learned something. I learned that uh, some of the training I was doing wasn't working, some of the weights I was doing wasn't working. Maybe I made a mistake in the race, so I didn't get off the block quick enough. There was always something I took away from every experience. So um, over the career, I, th I like to think, I mean, I broke the world at eight times. And I look back now, and when I, when I started swimming, I had a best time. And I always wanted to go faster, 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 and it was kind of like, what makes me go faster? So when I broke the world record, and everyone went, oh, I'm a pheno you know, phenomenal, fastest man in the world. And I went, yeah, but it, subconsciously, I'm going to, it's my best time. So I kept wanting to go quicker. And of course, records are there to be broken, and people broke them. And that was always my target, for me to go faster, not worry about everybody else, just how fast I could be and how good I could be. You've got to be committed, um, you've got a great awareness, you've got a great belief, um, and you need to, I have a saying of fly with the eagles, don't peck with the hens, and that's kind of surround yourself with like-minded people. And I was probably quite fortunate throughout my career that I had those people around me. I could have easily gone off on another route, but a lot of the time it was, I surrounded myself and I think energetically I had people around me that were of the same mindset. But you know, a peak performer, someone that's um, motivated, uh, and not being afraid of failure. I think the bottom line is you've, you've, you've got to, to be, because you only learn a lot about yourself by trying things, taking yourself out of your comfort zone. There's so many words to describe a, a, a elite performer, I think, but ultimately it's about, about this, about, about uh, your attitude and your behavior reflects in your results. you do need to fail to learn. You need to fail to, to grow. Uh, and I say, when I, yes, I won a lot. I lost a lot. And I think the losing was the thing that I didn't like losing. So it sort of motivated me to do better and better and better until sometimes I won and sometimes I still lost. But um, it never stopped me standing up there and having to go. I think with sport, every time you stand on the block, you're kind of vulnerable because you don't know what's going to happen. Every race is different, every game is different. And I think every day with people, things are different. 
Um, but I think for people enable, for, for, to enable people to grow, they need to step out of their comfort zone. And whether it be in sporting terms, I say to people, it's like me, you know, I hate long distance. Well, do you know what? Go and do something. Go and do an open water swim. It's long. And I don't like it. But then you learn a lot about yourself by actually getting in there and having to go. So I do it just to, so I can go, did that. And also I give myself a pat on the back for doing it and just take yourself out of your comfort zone, try something that is completely different. And there'll always be, I think human beings are very good at doing something they're, they're comfortable doing and they're good at doing. So they avoid doing the things they're not good at doing. And for me, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, jumping in freezing cold water was horrendous. But I knew I had to do that to, to get to where I wanted to go to. So sort of embrace what you're not good at and you don't like doing, because the more you do it, the better you will become. Carrying a flag around the opening ceremony was huge for me. It was my fifth Olympics. I was 38 years of age and I knew underneath it all it was going to be my last Olympic Games. And I'd been on the team for 23 years and I was kind of the granddaddy of the team. So I was our team captain. I'd been team captain for a number of years. And every team within Team GB, you know, so tennis, hockey, athletics, cycling, diving, everyone had a team captain and, and every team nominates someone to carry the flag round. Uh, and what was quite humbling for me is that all the athletes from Team GB as a whole nominated me to carry the flag round at the opening ceremony. So that, that was a humble moment. I think there's, there's been 27 Olympic uh, games, so I'm one of 27 flag bearers, team captains. And um, just walking into the bird's nest and leading out Team GB was, uh, was very emotional. And uh, I kept pinching myself thinking this, this won't last forever, so I walked very, very slowly and make, enjoy the moment, really. And it was, it was an amazing moment. It was phenomenal. Yeah, it was hard to decide. It was, it was, it was hard to retire. That I think that I knew at some point it would. You know, I think any athlete knows it's going to it's going to be sooner rather than later because the body's going to give up. And I think I stre I didn't stretch it as long as possible. I probably could have gone another Olympics if I'd have wrapped myself in cotton wool. But I always wanted to retire at the right time and at my time. And yeah, 38 in swimming terms is is getting on. Um, and I didn't want to fall off the side, I wanted to go out on a high. So like I say, carrying the flag round opening ceremony was a huge high. Uh, and then it was kind of like, what do I do next? You know, I'm, I've been a swimmer, I'm a high performing athlete, high performing swimmer, where do I go? And I think what happened was another world opened up in terms of, I did Strictly Come Dancing first of all, which I went from being a great, well known in the sports world, but in the real world not known. And all of a sudden I became the swimmer that did Strictly Come Dancing. So swimming, Strictly Come Dancing gave me a, a platform to the general public, if you like. And then from that, doing motivational speaking, hosting events, I suppose, I didn't realise that it's all to do with the mindset. Small changes can make, can have, you can have big results. Um, with marginal gains for me, with, with, with 50 freestyle, it was 21 seconds, it's not a long time. But uh, if I broke my race down from uh, you know, reacting off the block, and reacting off the block, if I say I'm gonna focus on reacting off the block and jumping off a the block, there's so many exercises I can do to get off the block faster, reaction training, there's so many things that I can do to get my legs stronger so when I push off the block I'm stronger. So that's just getting off the block to enter in the water, the streamline into the water, the kicks underneath the water. I can break down my race so much, stroke tempo, the turn, the glide, the finish. There's so many things I can do to change 21 seconds. And, I, and it's quite interesting when you are in the moment of swimming, it's sort of everything slows down when you're in the now and it's trying to get people in the now, I suppose, and people within their job trying to, or, or, or business in general, trying to break down every little component. Because I think there's, there's improvements that people can make everywhere. People, people themselves can make improvements, personal improvement. And I think if people look at making personal improvement as a whole, the company can make some big improvements. I think with a healthy body, healthy mind, and I think a lot of people, one of the things for me is I think when people are moving, they think better. When people are fitter, they feel better. Now, elite athletes highlight what's possible with the human body, but going below that, it's all to do with, like I say, it's, it's moderation. So I think if people are aware that uh, if they, they are fitter, 
and I'm not on about running a marathon, but if they're a little bit fitter, they feel they've got more energy, they feel better in themselves. I think within every company, they should promote health and well-being. We go back, you know, your health is your wealth. If they promote that side of it, people will turn up, and when they do turn up and they show up, they'll have more energy, uh, they'll have more self-esteem, that surely you'll get more productive people in the workplace.